Okay. Mm, he's having a hard time making it up there. That's the first wildlife I've seen. Of them. This one here is not afraid. He's standing right out there in the middle of the road. He wants to use the road. He doesn't want to get off of it. Now, there he goes. This is my camp setup. Um, it's, you know, like I said, I've been here for a day already, but. Um, it got pretty cold last night, and there's still some snow up there on the mountains. You can see up top of my lighting system, and um, down here my solar system that's charging the batteries, batteries to um, until wee hours of the morning or all night long, uh, if I choose to do so, and that can run, uh, you know, my computer or whatever, my listening devices, my surveillance systems, that kind of stuff. So. I'm pretty well set. Uh, last night while I was, uh, just after I got through watching a movie and set everything down uh, for the night, I was laying there and listening. And I, uh, about, oh, about one o'clock in the morning, uh, I heard a whistler start whistling. And uh, he only whistled for a little bit, and it sounded like it was uh, coming from the, the uh, west of us. And uh, so I was laying there listening, and all of a sudden I heard a thunk on the side of my trailer. <laughs> and I think this is what made the thunk. <laughs> um, it's just a chunk of wood. I put the water bottle next to it so you can see how big it is. But uh, yeah, I guess it bounced off the side of my trailer and landed here on my shelf. Um, don't know where it came from or anything like that, so... No, to the I'm gonna swing around and, and show you the trees. Here's the, the trees that are nearest me. Uh they're a good distance away. Um, you know, I suppose the limb could have come off of up there somewhere. But hit the now if it did it hit the side of my trailer and then bounced down to the the side, or did somebody get over here in these bushes and uh, chunk a stick at me while they were whistling? Well, this is uh, day two and I'm out in the back roads uh, checking for tracks and stuff. It's pretty rough stuff. I'm glad I got some new tires. But, uh, I'm going to bounce over this portion right here real quick. Um, just a few minutes ago when I first, well, about a half an hour ago when I first turned off on this road, <laughs> the car pulled up next to me and it was Ranger Dave <laughs> in his uh, civilian car. Evidently, he's not a uh, forest ranger right now. The uh, sequestering uh, cut his job, and so he's not currently employed. However, he says that uh, he'll be in a watchtower in May. So now I at least know where to come and visit him. And uh, he was telling me that uh, now that he's not currently in the... <clears throat> Forest Service, that uh, he um, can talk to me a little more freely about Bigfoot and stuff like that. He said that there, there has been a lot of activity over on uh, this one particular mountain, and I'm not going to name it because I don't want everybody in the world to go there. But uh, he was saying that there's been a lot of activity there and a lot of uh, scat, a lot of poo. And I told him that I had taken some of the scat that he had told me about that I found later um, and had it tested. And that was before the doctor 
Ketchum study, and it, it was done um, by a university back east, and of course I'm not going to name them either, but they came back and said that it was animal origin unknown. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Okay, at the request of one of our viewers, he said to use bacon. So I put bacon. It's a good eight feet up there in the tree, hanging down. And I took and put bacon grease all over the ground here to really make it stink like bacon. So, you know, I, I just slathered it all over the place. This time right there by that rock. So it really smelled good. And uh, I've got a camera that's right down there that's going to be looking at it. Alright, hope to get it. Hope we get some action. We should. I got some whistles last night. So, hopefully we'll get something. Just in case, uh, here on the picnic table, I'm leaving out two Eddie Buddy bars, some leftover scrambled eggs and bacon, a cloth that is soaked in bacon grease, and some uh, beans, you know, some beans down in there. That's the cup that had the grease in it, some bacon grease. And I've got a camera right there on that tree looking at it. Okay. And after they get through with all the snacks, if they're thirsty, I'm leaving out an open can of Diet Coke on top of the cooler. Uh, they can get in and get another one if they want. But uh, what I've done is I've put a camera on that bucket right down there. I'm putting the cameras low on purpose. Um, Susan tells me that the Bigfoot are used to looking things for looking at things at the high level or above, and uh, that they may not look down that much. It's kind of like us when we're shopping at Walmart. There's a visual zone that you usually shop at, and you don't look up, up over the he overhead or you don't look down on the very bottom shelf, usually. Uh, psychological. So we're going to give it a try.